and welcome to the channel mac cam 89 here and today i have a pickups video for you a few weeks back i went to a small town convention called retro expo and um it's a rather small convention that's held in uh, tiverton rhode island and they're going to be having it again in the early part of the new year which i'm probably going to end up going and it's really a convention that's geared towards 80s and 90s toys comic books and then also video games as well they had some uh celebrities there mainly artists and voice actors uh notable voice actor that they had there is the voice of angelica from the rugrats so uh, it was pretty cool if you grew up during the uh, time where rugrats was really popular uh, in the 90s and um of course they had a bunch of sellers with comic books toys a mixed variety of the two and uh just items from that the 80s and 90s and then they had quite a bit of uh, retro game sellers as well from you know the local communities around rhode island so it was a pretty cool event it wasn't expensive to get in it was it was rather cheap so i'm looking forward to being able to go again in the new year and I got a good variety of games here. I ended up setting a budget of about 100 bucks uh, that I had saved up to that. I know, not big money, but you could still find some really good deals at that price. But that's just what I can afford at the moment. And uh, the first game that I ended up picking up is an NES title. I actually played it on a live stream a few days back. And it is a Sunsoft title that I had never heard of before, but... I decided to take a chance because it is Sunsoft. They're the great company for NES games. And I really like the artwork for this game. And it is Xenophobe for the NES. And it is a two-player co-op. Kind of like a, a shooter, I would say. I guess so an early version of almost like a third-person shooter. Because you're seeing your character, your full character on the screen. And basically, the premise of the game is to clear out these bases of alien life forms. Uh, it's actually a, a, a good amount of fun, I think. I ended up paying $5 for this, and we'll, we'll um, shoot over to price charting as well to see if I got a good deal or not. I think when you go to these conventions nowadays, I think the expectation is that you're going to be paying market value. Uh, unless you're running into a seller that absolutely just wants to get rid of their inventory or even above a little bit of market value as well because, you know, they got to, you know, pay for the expenses of being there to sell at the convention plus all the travel that they may do. Some of the stores were a little wa little ways out. Um, so there's kind of that convention tax that you sometimes get for there was no price on this game. Uh, he had to look it up. And uh, he ended, I ended up paying $5 for it. And it looks like a loose copy of this game is $5.50. Is what it's going for. So I got a, a little bit below market value. Um, I think it's, uh, it's a really fun game. Really worth the $5 in my opinion. All right, let's get back to the next game. So, of course, I had to get a PS3 title. And uh, honestly, for what they have for PlayStation 3 games there, there wasn't a lot within kind of the budget that I kind of set out. Uh, but I ended up finding one. In fact, the guy was really trying to get me to spend more money than what I ended up spending here. Uh, he was trying to get me to buy the original Dragon Age. I'm like, all right, I already got it. He was trying to get me to... Uh, by Dragon Age Inquisition, and I'm like, eh, there's a better version on the newer consoles. But I ended up going with Dragon Age 2. It's a really nice looking copy for $10. And uh, again, we'll check out what it's going for on price charting anyways. And this is a game that kind of, you know, went a little bit away from the original Dragon Age games. It uh, focused more on an action style, kind of a little bit less RPG, and some people didn't like that, but I ended up liking it. It was still a great story, still a fun playthrough. I'm looking forward to eventually having some time to go through both 
Dragon Age, it's his expansion pack, and then eventually Dragon Age 2. Um, am I excited about the new Dragon Age? Absolutely not. I, I hate the artwork direction that they went. I hate a lot of the controversy that's surrounding that game at the moment, and I'm not really expecting much. It might sell a little bit better than some of these other games that have been flopping, but I think I'm going to end up passing on the newest and uh, just keep playing the older Dragon Age games. Um, and that's all I'll say about that. But an awesome game for 10 bucks. Let's see what it's going for in price charting. All right, so it looks like I ended up paying a little bit over market value. So this one is going for, I'll pull it up on the screen so you can see it. So a complete in box copy looks like it's going for $7.38. So I overpaid by a couple of dollars, which is kind of expected, I guess, that convention tax. For $10, I think that's it's still a really good game that's worth that. So not a bad deal in my opinion. All right, and the next game is very exciting to me because it is a game that I played quite a bit as a child on the Sega Genesis. So I was very excited to get a complete in box, and not only a complete in box, but a very nice complete in box copy of Mortal Kombat 2 for the Sega Genesis. This is the version that I owned as a kid. I did not own the Super Nintendo version, but I owned it on the Sega Genesis. Which I'm kind of, as I'm getting older, I'm kind of liking the Super Nintendo version more just because you didn't realize how much sound you lost with the Sega Genesis version. But you can see here, nice complete in box. And the manual, boy do I miss the manuals of the, you know, retro game days. Nice thick manuals, it's got some great. Uh, artwork in here and it even gives you all the move sets for all the characters so pretty cool i ended up paying twenty dollars for this one complete in box there were a few sellers at the convention that were selling complete in box mortal kombat 2s and they tended the other guys had it for 25 i saw this one for 20 so you know for a five dollar difference i said why not let's go for that one it, it uh, was in very good condition. And uh, let's see what the market value is for Mortal Kombat 2 on the Genesis complete in box. All right. So I think the other sellers, they, they had theirs priced at market value. You're seeing here $25.27 um complete price and uh, i paid 20 so that so far two games i i've paid under value being at a a small retro convention so i think i did okay especially st maintaining the kind of the budget there not too shabby all right i do have two more the next title is an original xbox title and uh, I was actually pretty surprised. Uh, I'm curious to see what price charting has this game at because I, I could have sworn this game was one that was a little bit on the pricier side, but I could be wrong. Uh, but I ended up picking up Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I believe it's uh, Battle Nexus 2. And I remember seeing a YouTuber talking pretty highly of this game, and it is in complete condition. Uh, very, very good shape, the disc in manual, as well as the case itself. Doesn't have that nasty grime feel that you get a lot of times. And I ended up paying $10 for this game. So we'll see what it's going for market-wise. All right, and yeah, this is another one that I got a pretty good deal on. Because Complete in Box, the Complete in Box price over here 
is twenty dollars and thirty two cents where I ended up paying ten dollars for it. So that is a really good deal. And the last game I am also very excited about. It is a PlayStation 2 title. It's been a wish list of mine. And um, I saw a couple of copies that were a little bit higher than what I ended up paying for this one. And it is Scooby-Doo, Night of 100 Frights, and Great Condition, also complete in box. The manual and disc are also in really good condition. And I ended up paying $17 for this one here. And this is a game that I've seen kind of fluctuate in price. So we'll kind of see what that is going for now. All right. And if we pull up the PS2 version. So it looks like market value. It's actually gone down. So I actually ended up paying a dollar more, which is surprising. I thought I could have sworn I've seen this game in the twenty some dollar range. Uh, but we are we are kind of in a interesting time period for game prices because we are seeing a lot of games go down in value. Uh, kind of like a mini retro game crash. Nothing serious, but games are definitely. Uh, falling in price in uh, 1624 still not bad i paid a little less than a dollar over market value but i this is a really nice clean copy cib so really excited about all these pickups and uh that's the one difference between a mystery box versus shopping yourself is you're picking up games that obviously you want and you want to play so uh, as opposed to a mystery box where, yeah, it's nice because it's a mystery. You might get some stuff that you may or may not play or get a game that you would never have thought of. Then you're like, oh, that's kind of cool. And there is. I, I do like my mystery boxes. But obviously, this is all stuff that I knew I wanted to check out and pick up. So, yeah, what do you think? How did I make out at this small retro convention called Retro Expo, which will be happening again, I want to say in May. Uh, of next year so and it is again is very cheap to get in uh the one thing i will say is if you plan on coming a long way it is not a big convention at all in fact i, I you can see everything in two hours so, and there isn't much else to do outside of buying from these vendors uh, taking pictures or getting autographs from some of the celebrities there isn't really anything else going on beyond that but I think for the price, it was still worth it. Plus, as you could see, you can still get some good deals. Deal. So what do you think? What was your favorite game from these that I picked up? And as always, happy gaming and God bless.